College football big game previews week number three is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six, incredible sports books. I still I don't have a date on that yet. No, for Fitz, yeah, we need to get. But I'm I'm excited about it. Uh, the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and the sports book at the Fitz Casino. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can get our picks at winningcureseverything.com. I don't know necessarily that you want them after last week uh, or the week before. Actually, we're gonna get this turned around. We're gonna get this going in the right direction. Anyway, let's talk week three. Okay. Let's talk about two really good matchups. I'll and give then, you that. I'll give then, you two really good matchups. And then three or maybe four or five that are like, okay, like maybe something could happen. This, this is the flaw with college football. It's Yeah, because you do have some dud weekends. And it's not that this is like a dud weekend. Oh, it's a complete dud weekend. There's There are good games here, like it, or at least interesting games. How's that? No, not. Because when I, when I call this big game previews, I should really call it like maybe possibly slightly interesting previews. Right. <laughs> but now, if sense? we're going to do that, there's a game on the schedule that I'm actually interested in that literally would not be considered good or big. Let's talk about that one first. What is that one? I think Boston College going to Wake Forest is going to be a, nope. like a fun, I got interesting it. game. I got it on here. And that's a Thursday night game. And I don't think anybody in the country cares about that game other than people, not even like North Carolina people, just, just people in the small section of Wake Forest. And the people that care about BC football, which is not very many up in up in Boston. No, yeah, which is crazy because these are two actually pretty good teams. I think they're going to be fun. Anyway, let's talk about this first. Uh, so we are recording this on on Sunday morning. Like, Correct. So I went to sleep at two a.m. and then got in here at what like nine twenty. Bless them. What? Yeah, oh, I got, <laughs> I got in here at like nine twenty after going to sleep at two a.m. last night. And waking up three times with a baby. Making bad decisions in life. Well, I had to get this all my notes result. together. And so I'm t- we were trying to figure out what the big games are going to be because if BYU had beaten Cal, that would have been a big game. It would like, have been a big BYU game. going to Wisconsin, but since they lost, then uh, you know, it's I weird. mean, it would have been a game on the list. I don't know that. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's a big game. It would have been more interesting than some of the ones that we We got. would have put it on our paper. There you go. Uh, first game that we'll talk about is LSU at Auburn. Uh, the metrics say that Auburn should be a seven and a half point favorite. The lines are not out yet on these, um, but we'll talk about that gambling week. So whatever. Okay. Uh, the over under should be around forty. We think. I think. Uh, game Saturday, two thirty p.m. CBS Jordan or Jordan Hare Stadium. I almost said it wrong, man. In Auburn, Alabama. Since Gus Malzahn has arrived at Auburn in two thousand thirteen, the home team has won every game in this series. Yeah. That wasn't there a and I didn't go back into the research. Wasn't there a stretch where like the road team won every year for a little while? It went yeah before Gus. It, that was like Tuberville, right? Um, I mean yeah, it, it went all the way to Tupperville, but I don't know that it stopped at Tupperville. I think Chiswick did the same thing. That's that's crazy. That's just nuts. Like where it just flips one year yeah. and then it's back to normal. Uh, both teams have nasty defenses. Both teams have a big non-conference neutral site win and a win against the high school team. LSU only had 335 yards of total offense against Southeast Louisiana. Uh, 40 of that was a Hail Mary. And only 296 against Miami. Will they come up with some game? Like, are they playing vanilla? Or will they have some kind of game plan for Auburn this week? Uh, last year, Auburn led 20 to nothing at the half in Baton Rouge. And LSU came back and won 27-23. That is a twenty-seven to three second half. I expect that the under will probably hit this year. That's just a guess. Yeah, I mean, if I had to bet, if it's around the forty mark, I don't think they're both scoring in the twenties. No, um, I think these are two evenly matched teams. I don't know that we know a lot about them from this. We know nothing about them from this past weekend. All right, no. nothing. Al- nothing Alabama about. State and Southeast Louisiana yeah. are don't, not. Don't count. Didn't matter. Didn't yeah. happen. Um, but the week before. You know, Miami Miami's pretty good defense. LSU's offense didn't look great, but they still ran the ball. They still ran the ball well. Um they dominate the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And uh and, and I think, you know, Burrow didn't have a great game, but he 
he did well enough to win the game. He didn't cost. Yeah, him he the didn't game. cost him the game, and that's the most important. This is thing. the biggest thing that LSU has done over the last couple of years is they don't turn the ball over. Yeah, and and it's so understated that they well, don't Danny, turn Danny the Etling ball had over. Two interceptions. Two interceptions. They year. turned. They had eight turnovers, fumbles, and interceptions on the whole season last year. Yeah, um, that that's that's unbelievable. That's that's the easiest way to win games. If you have more talent than somebody, then you just find a way to not beat yourself. That's it. Don't Let the other yourself. team screw Correct. up. Auburn, I trust Auburn offensively a lot better. I think Auburn's defense is way better than Miami's. This game scares me. It is on the road for LSU. Jordan Air is a tough place to go play. And, by God, it is uh, – uh, it's revenge. Oh, from last year? From last year. Well, listen, any – I. I called this last year. LSU should have been beat by two touchdowns. It looked like it was happening. You never count LSU out when the Mad Hatter's in the house. Dude, I, I remember us talking about this because I, I actually bet on Auburn. I know. And I told you. And <laughs> I told you. I told you. You told me I was crazy. I told you were crazy. I, I said, said Les Miles said, is being Auburn honored, is honored in that game for the national championship. You never, ever, ever bet against the Tigers. What was it? Was it in the house? Was it two weeks after they got beat by Troy? It was no. It was the week after they got beat by Troy. Was it the week after? No, it was no. Two, they went, to, they Florida. went to Florida. Yeah, yeah, it was two weeks after. That's right. Yeah, it was they two went to weeks Florida, after. Stomp Florida, and then they came home. I wouldn't call the Florida win a stomping. Stomp Florida. Seventeen stomping. to sixteen was not a stomping. Stomping. <laughs> anyway. The guy that scares me in this game, Auburn is a man. These teams are exactly alike, except yeah. Auburn has a better quarterback. Quarterback, yes, yeah. quarterback play. Jarrett Stidham is a legit quarterback. This is not a knock on, on Burrow at all. Stidham is a really good quarterback. He, oh yeah, he might be one of the best in the SEC, one of the best in the country. I think he's going to be a, a um, top NFL draft guy. I do too. Doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Makes unbelievable throws, plays, catches. Auburn's receivers receivers are probably better than LSU's as well. We got open a lot during the Miami game. Really good passes thrown, hit in stride, and just bounced off hands. I think some of these guys are young. I think they're maybe they're finding their stride, but they had a lot of drops in that Miami game. You can't drop the football. Um, this game makes me nervous. This game makes me worried. Yeah, I can I can understand that. I can understand why. Uh, but I do think it's going to be a fun football game. No, this will definitely be a fun game. I mean, these teams have played three to six games before, and they were awesome to watch. Yeah. They were not. There's a lot of talent on the field. Boring. We'll just say that. Uh, next up, Ohio State at TCU, and they say at. But, look, this is Saturday, 7 o'clock, ABC at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Uh Look, Ohio State should be around a six, seven point favorite. They'll probably be like a double digit favorite because so many people bet on Ohio State. Uh, if the line is double digits, I'm probably going to go the other direction. Over under on this should be around fifty seven and a half, according yeah, to the metrics. B- bigger number. Uh, both teams have played really weak teams. Ohio State's played Oregon State and Rutgers. TCU has played Southern and SMU. Uh, this is Ohio State's last game without Urban Meyer. So, cheers to you for for that. Ohio State quarterback Dwayne Haskins has been absolutely incredible. He's 42 out of 53 on the year, 546 yards, nine touchdowns, one interception. I understand none of those stats, stats don't matter. matter. No, I, no, 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 not stats don't matter. Those stats don't matter. Yes. No, none of the stats for TCU matter either. Here's something that, that matters to me. Ohio State gave up 196 rushing yards to Oregon State in week one. That That spells good things for TCU, I think. Uh, the question is, can TCU actually slow down Ohio State's offense? Like this is not like this is the most talented TCU team that they have ever had there. Ooh, I don't uh, know by, about by that. the numbers, no. by the numbers. No. Like well, just talking two weeks recruiting in, rankings. Played high no, school I'm, teams. I'm not talking about stats. I'm talking about recruiting rankings. That team that got left out of the national championship run, that was a really yeah, that was good a really team. talented team. But as far as recruiting rankings go, they've got four stars, like two, three deep at almost every position. This is the most talented on paper okay. that Gary Patterson has ever had, and they are still light years away from Ohio State. Like, that's insane. Correct. Um, but on, from there, how much better would this game be if it was at uh, Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth? I don't know that it would be better. Like, that place only holds 50,000, 
But Jerry World is going to be about half Ohio State fans. Well, yeah, no, it's a, I mean, it's a neutral site game. Yeah, which it's not supposed to be. This is tech. This is TCU's home game. Yeah, I know. They just moved it to a bigger venue so they could hold more people. Turned it into a money well, grab. Now, hold on. If if they moved it to a venue where they could hold more people, but they're still only selling the same amount of visitor tickets, then yeah, it's absolutely going to be a home team for TCU, and it will be ruckus and it will be crazy. And Ohio State fans aren't getting in. If it is a neutral site game where half the tickets go to the Ohio State team and half the tickets go to the TCU team, we're having a different conversation. Well, now you've you've seen like a Notre Dame home game last year yeah, against but Georgia. That's because Notre Dame doesn't; sh- their fans but, just don't show up. Sometimes, but they open up those other tickets to like for a neutral site game. They open them up for everybody if they don't get sold. Okay, if TCU gets to control them like it's a TCU home game. Then they don't, and they have to buy them on StubHub and, and, and SeatGeek and all these other things, which they, Ohio they State will. fans are going to do. They're going to show up. It won't be 50-50 if TCU got control of the tickets. I don't know the answer to that. What you got on this one? I like TCU a lot. I, I, I know that it's the wrong thing to do. I know that there's a, there's a top six teams in the, in, the, in, in the NFL. In college <laughs> football right now, I'm so ready for, for this afternoon to get started. Um, there's there's a top six that is just head and shoulders different and better than everybody else, and and Ohio State's one of them. Betting against them and picking against them is not smart, but I don't care. I think I think Gary Patterson's a better coach than what'll be on the field. I know they don't have the talent, not even close. Um, the fact that Urban Meyer's not there is so it's such a farce to say he's suspended for three weeks when he really. Gets to coach. He put in the game plan. He gets to coach the team the entire week. He just can't show up for the games. It's such a joke. Um, and, and, and to that point, Ohio State fans, you can be excited about your team. You can root and support your team in spite of all the crap that's going on. That's totally acceptable and fine. You do not get to consider yourselves a victim of something, okay? So just stop that it's us against the world and we have been wronged thing. That is is garbage. I, I'm with you. I'm going to be pulling hard for TCU. I love TCU anyway. You know that. I root for him every week. I always bet on Gary Patterson. He's he's one of my – he might be – him and Leach are up there as top two favorite coaches in all of college sports. And well, uh, you did With Charlie Strong a close third, right? <laughs> uh, I like Charlie. He's not – he's not – I don't have man crush love like I do with Leach and – and Gary I, I just respect Strong, and you don't, and that's the difference. Um, <laughs> shots, just keep throwing them. Um, I, I am like you. I would like for TCU to win this game. I think it would kind of turn college football on its head a little bit. We need something interesting to happen. Chalk is boring. It yeah. just is. That's You are allergic to chalk. Absolutely. It's garbage. Um, it's just a just – but, but just like Georgia last week, like picking against a team that is this talented – very difficult to do. Dwayne Haskins is other world throwing that football, man. Other world. But it, it might be it might look different against TCU's defense. So we'll see. Let's move on to the next game. Boise State at Oklahoma State. Line should be Oklahoma State minus uh, seven. We'll say seven. The over under will be over seventy. Yeah, it'll be big. these teams will score massive amounts of points. Um it's Saturday at 2.30 p.m., either on ABC or ESPN. It's at T. Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Boise is averaging 59 points a game against garbage competition. Oklahoma State is averaging 56.5 against garbage competition. Redshirt senior quarterback Taylor Cornelius has alleviated any problems that, that Mason Rudolph may have left in his wake, right? There, there are no problems with the Oklahoma State offense. If you think Gundy... Is is relying or depending on one quarterback? You're just wrong, and you yeah. haven't watched this man coach. Taylor Cornelius is 50 out of 75 on the year for 728 yards, six touchdowns, but three picks, and that's against garbage teams. I understand that those stats don't matter, whatever. But like, you can't be turning the ball over against Boise State. Boise is the favorite to get the G5 spot on the New Year's Six Bowl thing. Uh, can a win here? possibly get them into playoff contention if we have a bunch of two lost teams that are conference champions whatever is there any chance that we can get boise state in there no group of five team will be allowed in the playoff 
I think you were probably right. It doesn't matter. The big boys will see to it that we never have a what, what six. If, what if Oklahoma State doesn't goes matter. and wins the Big 12? Doesn't matter. And they get, like, demolished at doesn't home matter. by Boise State. Clemson will have – if Clemson and Vatek run the table, the loser will get in of the championship. It is just Over gonna, Boise it's, State. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just going to happen. You're right. How you feel about this one? I – there is a part of me that just discredits and disrespects all the hype that Boise State's been getting just because it's Boise State and they're easy to talk up as the group of five. I think Gundy is a much, better much coach. better coach than Brian And Larson. I And I'm going to bet that the talent on Oklahoma State's team is far superior from top to bottom. I could be wrong, and I've lost a lot of picks. I'm, I'm going to ride with the mullet until it's gone. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like Oklahoma State here. Um, I mean, Boise on the road, this is their Super Bowl. They're going to be hyped up for this. But at the same time, Oklahoma State has basically been planning for this game the same amount of time. They hadn't played anybody yeah, they either. Have not, they have everything to prove in this game. Yes. Yeah. Because if you lose to Boise, the the two high school teams you beat up on don't matter. Like This this isn't an end-of-the-year bowl game like Auburn against Central Florida last year where one one team has all the motivation – and the other doesn't. Oklahoma State still has the entire season, so you have to you got to come out and actually play. Like right. that matters. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think I'm rolling Ohio, or Oklahoma State here. I don't know. It's going to be interesting though. It should be interesting. That over under is going to be massive. It'll be a big number. It's going to be massive. Uh, so that's yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. If you like watching ping pong, ball's going to be going up and down the field the whole time. Number four, USC at Texas. USC should be about a point favorite according to the metrics, whatever. Over-under is 45 and a half around that. We'll see if these numbers are different whenever they come out. Saturday at 7 p.m. on Fox, Daryl K. Royal Stadium, Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Texas lost to Maryland, and USC lost at Stanford. Both teams struggled with weaker non-conference teams. Texas won over Tulsa 28-21 last night. And USC got dominated at Stanford. Um, uh, oh, USC uh, uh, beat who? UNLV? Yeah. The week before, they gave up 300 yards rushing. But I like you know. to think of this game, and not it won't happen after this game, obviously. I think this could be a loser lease town match. Yeah, yeah. I is... think the coach that loses this game could lose his job at the end of this season. At the, You think That would be Tom, Tom Herman. Herman being fired – if he puts up another seven and five season at Texas, two years back. If he back, goes seven and five, he is in no danger because they they guaranteed that dude the moon. Okay, but if he goes, you don't think they got the if, money to buy that contract out? If he goes for they on? they got all kind of money over there. I understand right. that, but look at at some point they have to realize like we got a problem here and we need to let good coaches coach. I'm like. That right. I think if Texas wins the game, you're not worried about that. Clay Helton? So, the fact that the metrics say that USC is a one-point favorite would make this a much more interesting game to me. And I understand that that, that one point, that line, shouldn't matter. But look, Clay Helton is 1-9 and nine as an underdog against the spread. And uh, Tom Herman is not that much better. But... Tom Herman, as an underdog, is hitting on like 85% his last... One point like, does not make an underdog, Gary. I'm with you. That's but just but I'm crazy. just... I'm going from that Clay Helton is awesome as a favorite. So, I'm just saying. Can JT Daniels improve on his performance against Stanford? Uh, look, they lost 17-3. to He was 16 out of 34, 215 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Is Texas's defense similar... To Stanford? No, not close. They're not as good as Stanford's defense. I don't think so. Both defense uh, have given up multiple plays, multiple huge plays this season already. How these games, how these teams, these programs have fallen from the greatest national championship game ever played to this. Yeah, it's it's pretty bonkers. I mean, it's, it's insane. That was not that long ago. That's what thirteen years ago. Uh, I don't, thirteen it was, years it, ago. Was it thirteen years? It ago? was. It was two thousand five. Okay, God, that's a long time. That's Vince Young already been in the NFL and back out. CFL and back out. Like, 
It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, you don't no, think Texas fans are crazy enough to where if, if he just has a terrible season, gone. Just, I mean, if just, he goes – We made a mistake. If he gone. goes like four and eight, maybe. Well, four and eight, yeah. What if he goes five and seven? Five and seven? What's the I line of demarcation for you? Oh, it's it's going to be at least three years. They gave Charlie three years. That and and in the last year he lost to Kansas. So like, you know, look, they paid this guy a lot of money. He I is, don't think money matters at all. I think winning matters. Winning does matter, but like you can't fire a guy after two years. I think that's you just can absolutely fire somebody after two years. Well, I mean, if the donations stop coming in, all that kind of like, if it is hitting you in the pocketbook. That's when it starts to matter. I'm not saying they should, by the way. The, I just I just know how rabid college football fans Oh, USC think. fans will go nuts. And they're not even as rabid as, no, as they're not close to Texas, Texas fans. But there will be people calling for Clay Helton. There were people calling for Clay Helton's job. Last his, night. His fir- no, his oh, yeah. first season. You remember he went one and three against like three top 15 teams. Yeah. Didn't have an experienced quarterback, didn't have an experienced team, and then all of a sudden reels off nine straight wins or whatever to end the season. Like, and won a Rose Bowl. And then last year he wins a Pac-12 championship. I think both of them are safe for a little while. I think both of them are safe at least two more years after this. But I, I've seen crazier things happen. I saw Lane Kiffin left on the tarmac at LAX. So, like, <laughs> you know, I know what's up. I know what's happening. Number five, West Virginia at NC State. NC State should be about a seven-point favorite, which will surprise a lot of people. I think West Virginia, actually, Vegas lines, is going to be favored in this game because there's so much hype around them, right? Over-under should be like 63-and-a-half. Neither team can stop anybody, which is crazy to think of for NC State. NC State they, had a defense. I don't know they, what happened to it. They had a defense. That, well, they all got drafted. Oh, they, that, that entire yeah, defensive line right. got drafted. Yeah, they all did go. Uh, Saturday at 2.30 p.m., ABC or ESPN, whichever one the Boise State game is not on, Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. West Virginia has wins over Tennessee and Youngstown State. North Carolina State has wins over James Madison and Georgia State. Who freaking cares? Will Greer is the number two on the Heisman favorite list. He's 46 out of 60, 761 yards, nine touchdowns, one pick. NC State is relying on quarterback Ryan Finley a lot, a lot this year. But he's looked good. He I has, mean, I no, know they he, played nobody. He has looked good, but it, even though they've played nobody, they had 83 total rushing yards against James Madison and only 115 yesterday against Georgia State. Yeah, they're Both just of those games the at home. That's, well, there's a lot of attempts. The yards per attempt, though, is, I mean, it's like, Three or the, or less, but they've gone to. Have you watched any of these games though? Like, yeah, they're going to these short screen passes. Yeah, yeah, it, they're, dri- they're it drives that. me insane. I mean, South Florida does the same thing. Like, that's their running game though. Oh like, yeah, they no, don't no, no, run the football, but they just throw it out to the sideline. Well, the reason they do that is because they cannot dominate the that's line. It, of they don't have the offensive line. No, it's yeah. not a. It's not a bad which is, thing. Which to is do. what you were talking about. Who were we talking about? Uh, Oh, Michigan. Yeah. I mean, like, you find a way to move yeah, you around. Find, you've got to find a way to – when you don't have the dudes to do something, you've got to do something different. Yeah. You are correct about so. that. Uh, West Virginia is 6-3 and three in true road games the last two seasons. Uh, NC St- – why did I do different years on this? NC State is 12-7 and seven at home the last three years. I don't know why I did three and two. Try, trying to make the stats say what you want them to say. I guess. It, it, look, I this is know. what happens. This know. was the last thing I took so notes what on at, at, two, in the morning? at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the other thing about this, you heard about the, uh, what is it, Hurricane Florence? Yeah. It's supposed to hit the East Coast it's supposed on, to, like, I, Thursday. It's supposed to rain like crazy on Friday. And then there's still going to be storms. And, like, they're expecting two inches of rain on Saturday in Raleigh, North Carolina. You remember the Notre Dame hurricane game back in, uh, what was it, 2016? That was like ten to three, and you just see people out playing football in like a lake. That might be what this game is like. I there is such a part of me that wishes they would figure out a way to just pack these guys up, fly them somewhere out west to play this game, or put it in a in a dome. Here's this is my problem with college football. Like saying, Riley's not sh- like too thing. far from. Charlotte, I actually right? have no problem with them playing it in the lake, and I actually think it's kind of fun and entertaining to talk about, but. In this game that we play, every game matters. 
And so now a game that's played in a typhoon is going <laughs> to matter? It's going to matter. Yeah. That's just such a stupid thing to, to, to build your concept on is because this game is played the way it's played, it, it matters. It, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. I think they should still play it. I think it would be fun to watch. I think it's good for oh, the it'll sport. Be, yeah, it's it'll going to be, be entertaining. But at the end of the day, if we're trying to say – Neither team is built for it, by the one, way. One of these teams loses this game, but let's say something crazy happens, and that's the only loss on their schedule. We're going to leave them out because they're not one of the Blue Bloods. They're not one of the big boys. They don't belong to the party. <laughs> and they lost and to they, NC State they or they West lost, Virginia. And they lost a game that shouldn't have been played in the situation that it was played in. Yeah. Now, now this storm could move. It could be different. This is what the forecast is saying but, um, on Sunday for Saturday. And we know we know how legit those things are. Oh, man. I, the yeah. predictability rating is not exactly no, great. Just, but this, this could wait be. wait until game time and see what this happens. This could be interesting. Uh, the honorable mention. Oh, it, but what would you take on this? NC State? West Virginia? I think I'd take West Virginia. I, I don't. I'd probably take the home team. I'd go with NC State. That's it. West Virginia wins this game. They're looking at probably 7-0 I, before their rough number. I'm very interested in the line and what Vegas will come out as. Yeah, because there's a lot of hype behind West Virginia's offense. Um, let's talk about honorable mention games real quick. Alabama at Ole Miss, 6 p.m. on ESPN. You told me last night that's going to be like a 40-point blowout. The the good teams playing mediocre teams is not anything to watch. We watched it with South Carolina, Gary. No, you're right. Even going on the road. Th- there's Ole Miss, no reason to talk about it. Ole Miss's offense does present It problems. presents nothing. But, Nothing. but this you're is right. just all hype and smoke. And Washington at Utah, 9 p.m. on that ESPN. That game is interesting. That game I'm in on. All right, t- tell me. Going to Utah is not an easy thing to do since they've come into the Pac-12. It's the last three years that has been one possession games. They have dominated at home. Yeah. Big no, right. teams, they're scared of nobody when you play them in Utah. Vandy at Notre Dame at 1.30 on NBC. Can't just can't do it. I can't uh, muster up look, fake excitement. Here's the deal, though. Notre Dame, you know, they beat Michigan, and it's this. Oh my God, Notre Dame's back, right? And then all of a sudden, Ball State comes to town, and they lose twenty four to sixteen. Like Notre Dame does not look great. Brandon Wimbush throws three picks and no, no touchdowns. He threw for two hundred ninety seven yards, but three picks. Uh, they were 35-point favorites in this game. I think everything is fine. That's it. You're probably right. I think they're running different offenses. I think they're trying things. I think they tell the quarterback, hey, take some chances because we got this. Do you think See Vandy, what you can do. Do you think Vandy has any chance in this game? No. I think you probably are right. No. And then finally, what we talked about before, Boston College at Wake Forest. I can't believe Thursday, you wrote that down. That's a Thursday, game that I'm going to make sure that I'm watching. It's oh, yeah. a game that I'm excited about. 6.30 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, yeah, no, it's – look, two teams that are 2-0. and oh. Wake Forest has an offense with Dave Clawson that right. is awesome. And, and Steve and, Adazio has a great one at, at Boston College. Well, and, and Boston College's defense, man, that, that, that's yeah. – those guys can play. They this come is, to play. That's a physical team. This is going to be an interesting game. I'm really glad they just, get some primetime TV coverage. Just from a, a schematic point, right? Like, yeah. We don't know. what One of these, both of these were trendy picks to be like, ah, you know, one of these could end up like 9-3 and three this year. Yeah. Well, this game kind of determines which one is actually going to be able to hit that. So... Yeah, this is Thursday night football this week on, on good. ESPN. Is it's going to be good. It's really good. So it's... It, the metrics say, by the way, Boston that College? no, both of these teams. Well, it it says Wake Forest. Does it really? It says Wake Forest by like three. Okay, but both of these teams are top thirty teams. That doesn't surprise me at all. That's why I was interested in this game. That's why I yeah. wanted to talk about them. It's a, it's not big names, but by God, it's a it's a it's gonna be a good game to watch. Yes, it is. College football doesn't have a lot of those. You are you we, are dead right about that. They got a lot of teams that are big and have big fan bases. Then they have some games that are not big fan bases, but they're way more fun to watch. You like Boston College in this one? I'm 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 biased. I don't know. I, I need to see what the line is. Yeah, because it, it says it says Wake Forest. Well, if metrics, it because you know I'm Wake flying, by three. I'm flying to Boston Friday. If this game was the Thursday night game, 
in, in Boston, Boston, I would have flown out Thursday. Yeah, I'd but since it is at Wake Forest, I mean, you could I'd have gone. You could fly out to uh, Winston Salem. I'm not. I'm not getting two plane tickets. <laughs> God, it costs so much to fly. I'm not getting two plane tickets. I, uh, I but I would have flown out a day early, and I would have stayed another night in Boston, and I would have gone to this game. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're we're doing the show from Boston and from South Alabama next week. This ought to be a lot of fun. Maybe. So we'll we'll see what we'll happens. See how with it that. works. Yeah, we'll we'll try it. No, we'll get it. We, dude, we can do Facebook if we have to. We just turn Facebook into YouTube. We'll figure it out. Either way, we're giving you all the information that you need to know to be a winner. Now you head over to Tunica. Go to Tunica, Mississippi. Get some action down on your favorite plays this week. As always, you can visit tunicatravel.com. To get the picks and the previews and all that mess, go to winningcureseverything.com. We will see you guys 